Hey, welcome back to the Drawing Database. Professor Mark Leone. This morning we're going to look at the drawings and spend 15 minutes with the drawings of English painter Joseph Mallard William Turner. So out of all that, just remember Turner. There's a lot of uh, surnames in that. So uh, Turner, English painter, born in 1775 and died in 1851 in uh, Chelsea. So uh, if you're familiar with the paintings of Turner, you know that he is primarily known for his romantic, uh, tempestuous, if you will, landscapes. And he did literally hundreds in hundreds of them. You can see his work almost in its entirety at the Britain, the Tate Britain Museum. And again, that museum is free in London. It's a wonderful museum and it's full. He has several wings in that museum and you'll get to see a nice selection of all of the landscapes. Today we're going to fo focus on his academic drawings, probably when he was a student and um, mostly figurative, to see the excellent draftsmanship and the quality of visual thinking that goes in his drawings that was transferred um, over to his uh, painting. So we see here an academic study of probably a, a Greek uh, 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 plaster sculpture or a marble sculpture from a museum. So it wasn't unusual. As a matter of fact, it was very common to study uh, from the uh, the marbled uh, uh, sculpture uh, in art training. Um, the model could stay still for long periods of time and this was probably the case. We see the wonderful head structure that um, uh, Turner has discovered and has accurately portrayed in the boxy quality of the figure, the central uh, central axis line in through here, the eye line, the bottom of the nose, bottom of the lip, and then bottom of the chin and ear line that he's found, the light source coming from the left uh, above, uh, mostly slightly actually above, we see the light source really directly hitting at kind of a 45, so probably over in through here at 45 degrees and then makes the lovely form shadow and then the strong cast shadow down below with a harder edge. It's a very looser study. It's probably done in a, maybe a couple of sittings. It's got a wonderful active gestural kind of hatched quality both in the the darker values of the form shadow and also we can see some of the lighter values here as well and then in the highlight heightened in chalk. It has a very strong um, feeling of antiquity to it, so very Greek oriented and, and Roman, uh, certainly with the Cupid's bow lips and the classical looking Greek and Roman kind of eyes without the pupil or iris, which tells us it's probably again from a uh, from a, a marble statue or even a plaster cast uh, statue uh, as well. And then the very simple background to finish off the composition. And we see that some of the drawing is also stumped. So it's very it's smeared with either the finger or a paper type stump. We can see some smoothness in here. Also in the cast shadow of the, the brow area where we see the shadows into the eye. And then in the form shadow, core shadow, and in the background. And then he comes back on top with a very quick kind of energetic contouring line to give nice expression. Most of the time we see that in, in, in uh, master drawings. We see an understanding of form and light, also of the smooth edge and then the contouring to give some rhythm. Rarely will you see just a blended edge on its own. It looks a little bit um, amateurish and I try to uh, get my students to um, uh, disabuse themselves of just blending with just their finger but yet rather use uh, both contouring line and also tone together. But look how the structure really holds quite nicely in the drawing of Turner. Here we see a live drawing or a drawing from a what, what it should be a live model with a pulling up, up a pulley probably a rope, very bulky model, but we see all the wonderful um, completion of the drawing, the, the beautiful uh, gestural quality to that, the lima bean in through here, the buttocks. Notice the, the glutes become butterfly wings to really separate the glutes off to the, the iliac crest in through here, the inclusion of the sacrum, the uh, depth of the back, Okay, the bulkiness and the pinching quality of the muscles, and then the pinching at the joints, and then down to biceps femoris, semi tendinous and membranous down through 
the gastrocnemius to the soleus to the Achilles down in through there as well. Lovely study lit from uh, the right. We see the cash shuttle moving slightly back to the left and a nice uh, uh, inclusion of a little bit of background tone to give the model uh, a degree of completion and we see the focal point uh, come back up to the head. Notice the almost effortless quality at the hair. Just some few simple marks to get the sense of a full head of hair. Even the underarm hair is included and a little bit of tone and tonality. Think of this this same idea on a, on a sphere, right? Lit from the top uh, right and then the overall uh, darkness to the uh, to the left and a cast shadow down and through there and you've got the same idea with this figure a little cast shadow in the back and through here let me take some of that off so we can see that better <clears throat> here we go next to that coming through and a little bit of notice the uh, cross contouring in the back and through here right in through the uh, right in through here to give direction to the model the electronon part of the uh, 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 humorous coming in and connected to the oldness and radio, radius. Really beautiful job of controlling the figure, uh, controlling anatomy naturally, and then we also have a little bit of a cast shadow on this left uh, lower glute that separates the forms in through here. Notice how this comes forward and begins to uh, attach over here to the femur so we can understand that uh, Turner did indeed know his anatomy very well and saw it very well. Look at the line weight variation and he heightens a little bit of the shadow in a red chalk. Maybe he, he ran out of the darker chalk. Probably here a study from a plaster cast or a marble cast. Um, Britain has uh, a vast collection of plaster casts in its museums and especially at the British Museum where we have a, a world view of um, antiquity of uh, art from all cultures and certainly there are several from Greek and Roman antiquity also Egyptian and it's not uncommon for artists to continue to draw from those live um, and I, but the last time I was in London that certainly uh, was the case as well so we certainly see that um, here we see a lovely, uh, again, the study from the cast lit from the top, um, almost slightly, really overhead. So how do we know that? Look at the cast shadows and the form shadows, how they hang at relatively the bottom of the forms. Here in the uh, chest, uh, rib cage, rectus abdominis area, into the abdominal, lower ab rectus abdominis, the genital region, and then down below and through here. So he's fairly well lit. So it's slightly, perhaps slightly in front, but uh, also also overhead, slightly in front, coming down. The control anatomy is wonderful. A contouring line, probably done either in graphite or a chalk or charcoal, works uh, really well. Notice the tilt, the axis here. So we have a shoulder axis here. We have a hip axis that straightens up somewhat. Those will generally be at... Um, different angles to get a contraction on this side and then the expansion here on this side to open up that line of being and then we have the forward foot and then the foot backwards. Now the graceful uh, understanding of the gesture of the foot, the um, in step here very lovely controlled and then the foreshortening here of the feet will go in a little bit uh, uh, faster here or, or deeper here to see the lovely foreshortening as the toes come slightly towards us. Notice how they curl up. Uh, the big toe is always pointing up and the smaller toes are gripping the bottom of the floor to help hold. And then this part of the foot and through here comes forward and the heel is back and overlapped by the front. And of course we have the ankles, the malleolus, the medial higher and the um, uh, lateral will be lower in through there. Lovely study by, certainly here by, by Turner. We enjoyed this one. We have a beautiful uh, gestural quality here of the leaning over of a figure and then looking downward. You can see it's a quicker study where he's probably figuring out a little, uh, rubbing his pencil to get the, the sharpening point the way he wants. It's a drawing that is done on this blue toned paper we start to see and then we see it heightened with not only the darker chalk but also the white chalk to give 
expression to the lighter side of the uh, model. Um, it, he's relatively in above lighting, and so we see the background here um, all toned in. But what we do get, if we go in a little deeper, we see the separation of the core shadow here from the reflected light in these areas. Then we have a nice integrity uh, 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 hard edge integrity boundary with the ending of the form as we do. Here's the glute coming through to here and then over to the uh, biceps femoris and then coming around, coming around the iliotibial tract, around, around, and then we have the coarse shadow, we have the reflected light, then a hard edge, and then we have the form and cast shadow of the uh, leg in the back and then this the chest coming over. Notice again the hard edge of the forearm really separates it here from this background so we need to learn about edges and we can learn them through master drawings quite quite succinctly. We have the hard edge and then the softer transitions in through the form shadowing and then again of course the beautiful silhouette of the head and just enough suggestivity that everything is in deep shadow. So uh, one way to achieve that very quickly is to um, generally don't fuss with detail when you're drawing is that get the overall con contour of the form tone it in with a mid-tone value about this range and then start to separate into a few darker values and a little bit of a socket eye and then the, make sure you have a good profile of the nose and you'll have more deep more of the what you want in the shadow um, that uh, is essentially a backdrop if you will for the detail in the light in this case this drawing Really, almost the focal point is right there. The the uh, the brighter highlight tones are on the elbow. Here we have a quicker sketch of probably another marble cast by Turner. This one seems a little bit more immature in terms of its stylings and its understandings, but it is an accomplished drawing, setting up the focal point at the top of the head with some rendering uh, in the dark and the light and through here. So it's very a very front lit. Um, object where there's not a lot of form shadow to either side so he's got a very much more difficult position so it's what I call kind of bleached out so he's very front lip there um, and then we have a little bit of dark here to hold the model the edges the edge boundaries are not quite as con conclusive they're a little softer so it's a little hard to see the integrity of the, the the boundary of the model in some areas but we probably will understand that this was done in probably one setting we do see stumping where he's blending out some of the tone and then going back with some hatched marks and hatched lines to uh, give uh, fullness and rhythm and some texture to the drawing. And then there's wonderful control of the anatomy that we see in the drawing. Let's pull that down a little bit. And as we go closer, you can see how hatched this drawing really is both all over, especially in the head. We see the, the uh, uh, linear lay-in very lightly done and then the hatching marks that are done just begin to render the model and he does these renderings remember with a purposeful rhythmic quality that gets us around the model through the model and uh, gives us more three-dimensionality in the forms which is very important and then lastly, uh, another study from a cast. You can see the, the platform that it's sitting on, kind of a discobolus uh, casting with the discus perhaps a before the throw. We all know the famous discus being thrown. Um, we see the model slightly tilted. It's a very subtle pose. We see the, the, the shoulder tilted. We see the main design line here and through. Then we see the hip the hip line and then the extremity lines right through the model over and there's your essentially your gesture right um, with the the drawing here we see the light source coming from the right above shining down onto the model uh, probably even higher than I have it because we see the undertoning of the shadows more underneath the forms of the model in through there and so we see the background tone being stumped in and rendered a little darker down through here. And so we see the shadow toning here. Um, you probably later on will want to put the dark back up 
closer to the head to get the focal point a little higher and more around the head rather than the the other parts of the figure but it's a lovely study on the toned paper he heightens it with white chalk let's go deep into the drawing so we can see this uh, further and we can see how how sketchy it gets as we get uh, into the model uh, properly but the integrity of the outer boundaries is solid notice that it's not outlined but it's it's solidly constructed with a sharp strong edge with variation in the line weight structure wonderful core shadow in through here with reflected light and then your uh, boundary edge and then the wonderful control of foreshortening with the hands, with the fingers, which is difficult, right? And then, of course, we have the subtle anatomy coming through the model's forms quite lovely as well.